What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Gibbs Borderlands 2 Save Editor. Now this is called the Borderlands 2 Save Editor, but it is often just referred to as Gibbed. Gibbed is actually the creator of the program, and if we click on this link here in his program, it will take us to his homepage, blog.gibb.me. I will leave that linked in the description of this video. On his homepage is a link to his Patreon, which we'll get back to in just a second, as well as the updated Borderlands 3 sequel save editors and Borderlands 2 save editor. So that's definitely a good thing going on there. On his Patreon, there are currently 21 patrons. I'm actually one of those patrons, as you can see listed here on the actual program. So we're going to go ahead and go over some of the capabilities and possibilities that exist with this program, which is indeed very powerful and it very much increases my fun with the game. If it contributes to your fun with the game, I recommend contributing to Gibbs Patreon as well. Anyway, there are options up here for new, open, and save, so we could create a new uh, character save file of any type, or we could open an existing save file, and this is the more common thing to do, I would imagine. So we're going to open up here my Sniper Zero. This is the one where I have gibbed all of the perfect gear, not the one where I am playing through legitimately. So let's start here with the general tab. We can see that it is save slot 24. The platform is PC. If you'd like to convert to an inferior platform, that is available to you. I wouldn't recommend messing with the save GUID. Um, I don't know what it does. I've never really touched it, so keep that in mind. There's the option here to import skills, missions, world data, or stats from another character. And that would be important if you were trying to make a uh, clone of another character, etc. However, I would recommend just copying the save file and renaming it if that was the case. Regardless, let's go over to the character tab. Here we can select our class, and you can see that they have the four classes from the main game, the Necromancer pack, and then the Psycho pack as well. We have my experience level here, maximum, my experience points, maximum, and my overpower level, maximum. I have no skill points left, so um, that's not really worth you know, changing right now unless for whatever reason you wanted to take your skill points up really high. My name, you can edit that. This is actually a little bit longer than the game allows you to make names from the uh, quick change stations from with actually, you know, within the game itself. And so I named this one a little bit longer. The head I wear, a lot of people ask about this, is from the special edition of the game. It's called Forgotten. And the skin I wear is from Poker Night 2, and it's called Are You Still There? Now, if you haven't, you know, acquired either of these, you know, in legitimate means, you could just select them in Gibbed and your character would wear them until you went to a quick change station and took them off, which is pretty cool for heads and skins that you don't have, but might want to try out. Now there's a tab here for vehicle and you can, you know, kind of pick what you want your skin to be on your bandit technicals or your fan boats or your runners, etc. So that might be interesting to you if you have a uh, very specific one that is your favorite. There's one, I think it's like turquoise something or another, that has Lilith in a bikini on it. Some people like that one, so you could select that. In the currency tab, there is a, uh, you know, field to edit your actual credits, your iridium, serif crystals, and torque tokens. I maxed these legitimately. I didn't max them um, through Gibbed, but you could definitely do that if you wanted. For example, if I wanted 403 iridium, I could do that. All right, here on the fast travel, you can definitely make sure that you have the ability to fast travel to each of these places. Um, apparently, I don't have these opened up, but whatever. In the backpack, and this is where probably most of the program, or the, pro the program sees its most frequent use, we can edit our weapons and our gear. So this is an aquamarine Raquel that I made recently. And you can see here that I have, um, let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, everything selected, and there are some things right now that have a yellow deal on them. That's because these aquamarine sniders are, or aquamarine snipers in general, are still a little bit weird. If we go to a more traditional weapon, you can see that there are no, um, you know, error tags at all there, or error flags. So let's go ahead and create a new weapon. Mm, let's try to create a twister, just so you guys kind of see how this happens here. So the Twister is from Hammerlock's Hunt, and you have to select which uh, set of items it comes from because each one has a different set, as you can see right here, and otherwise you might not be able to make the right weapon. So let's just go ahead and select Hammerlock's Hunt. We're, try we're trying to make a Twister, after all. So one of the weapons we're trying to make, or the weapon we're trying to make, is a Jacob's Shotgun. So we'll go to there, and then on the balance, this is where we'll be able to find the Twister. And then manufacture, it will auto um, 
show, only Jacobs available. If you really wanted, you could type in, say, a different shotgun manufacturer, if I actually, you know, don't type it wrong, and you'll see the red box go away there, and that can have some interesting effects on your weapons, but obviously that's not a legitimate weapon, so you might not want to do that. We're going to make the weapon overpower level 8. There is both manufacturer stage and game stage. I always sync them up. That's how items that are found legitimately are always done, so that's how I keep them. Now on the body, there is only one body available. It is a unique weapon. Um, and then the grip, here we can select a number of different things. I'm going to go with Jacob's grip, that way we get that bonus. The barrel, since it is a unique weapon, is going to be selected for us. Um, well, we select it, but there's only one option there. Sight, we can select a number of different things. Because it's a blue shotgun, we could select none if we wanted. But I'm going to go with the torque sight here. I find it aesthetically pleasing. Stock, you can go with anything. We'll just pick Hyperion for now. The twister always comes in shock. And now here you'll have a number of different accessories to pick from. What's interesting about shotguns is that theirs are a little bit less descriptive than others. It says Accessory Tech 2, Accessory Tech 3, Accessory Tech 4. Um, I'm going to leave a list of parts and accessories in the uh, description there of the video so that you guys can kind of know a little bit better what to choose. Vertical grip's a good one. It adds two extra pellets. That's the one I kind of like on the twister, so we're going to keep it with that. And then we'll select our material. Prefix and title will get automatically done once we go into the game, so there's no reason to mess with them right now. So if I was to load this up, all of a sudden, my Overpower Level 8 Sniper Zero would have a brand new twister. Like I said, with um, shotguns, the accessories are a little bit different than on other weapons, say a sniper rifle. It kind of gives you exactly what this will do. It says that we could get the bayonet, the accuracy, critical, stability, magazine size, fire rate, or damage. And that is the case with everything that is not the uh, shotguns. The shotguns are the only one with the slightly obscure accessory titles like that. Now, in the bank, it's pretty much the same as the backpack. We can go in here and, uh, you know, get different things from here and transfer them to here if we wanted. We could say we wanted this corrosive uh, Gromke Lyuta in the bank. We just go up here and, or right here, I guess, and copy code. Come over here, paste code, all of a sudden that's in my bank. So that's pretty cool. Now in the raw tab, there is a lot of stuff that you can do. I don't know what all of these do. Um, I haven't messed around with all of them, but you could change your bank, I guess. That might revert. I think Borderlands or Gearbox has made that, um, you know, revert to maximum of 24 at all times. But you can overstuff it here um, regardless. So if we go to mission playthroughs, we might be able to... Uh, see that we have a whole bunch of missions that are available to us here. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have right now our active mission is that, our filtered missions, mission data. So if we go on to mission data, we can see we have all of these different missions available to us. So if I wanted to reset round five of the robot slaughter, I could simply delete this piece of mission data and then that uh, particular quest would still be available to me. Now, what I've noticed here is that these quests kind of go in the order that you have completed them. And so it can sometimes be hard to find the exact quest that you want. As you can see, there are a lot of quests available. So um, that's one of the reasons why you might want to remember when you did a quest or um, at least know the quest name. Because if you want to reset a quest this way, you have to really, you know, find it and everything. So this would be um, the Rock Paper Genocide mission for corrosive weapons. So... Um, that was one of the earlier quests I did in the playthrough and everything. And so you can see here that some of these things are from the very start. This is the this town, so I would assume that would take on, uh, take place in Liarsburg, especially with it being up here near the top. At the bottom, the most recent quest I completed, I guess, was Bandit Slaughter Round 5. And before that, I had the uh, Valentine's Day mission. But this is really useful for resetting individual missions. You can see here that this is normal mode, true Vault Hunter mode, and here's the one you should actually be worried about ultimate vault hunter mode don't delete the whole playthrough that might not turn out good for you but you can definitely um go in and find individual missions that you can actually edit and stuff and so that's pretty damn cool beyond that we have a number of different things here that are available to us black market upgrades this is a collection we can see that i have seven in all of the uh ammo types and then nine in the bank and backpack which are you know all that can come there Challenge list, this is going to be a whole huge list of challenges. Um, you might be able to reset some individual challenges this way. I'm not entirely certain. I don't really mess with that. So that's, you know, a bunch of different things that you can do here with the Gibbed Borderlands 2 save editor. I don't mess around in the raw tab too much, um, but 
you know, some people do and everything, but uh, the main things I mess with are the backpack and the fast travel. You can change the location of your character here. Say I wanted to go fight Vorak or whatever, you know, I would come all the way down to here somewhere in the uh, Hammerlocks one and find ship to cliffs and then that would be the closest travel point to Vorak. That would save me quite a bit of walking in the Candlerax Crag if I wanted to go to Pete. I'd come up here and go to Pyro Pete's to beat down. And so that would get me, you know, in Pyro Pete's door there. And it would be uh, an opportunity to, for me to skip walking through the beat down. And I do that a lot when I'm trying to get somewhere quick and everything. I definitely recommend it. I often max my currency so that I don't have to worry about buying ammo. Um, vehicle tab, don't really use. Character tab, don't use often. The main things I use, backpack and fast travel. And I do use the raw tab to uh, reset my mission playthroughs and stuff. As always, I do recommend supporting his Gibbed um, Patreon here. It is definitely a very useful tool that has very much increased my enjoyment of the game. So as always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.